first video that I did on my motor got really long, as you know, so I ended up having to split that into two videos, and two actually became three. Um, it got so long. I was working on the bottom end, and the uh, it just got so detailed that I'm going to split the bottom end and the top end into two different videos. So this is going to be the second half, basically, of the bottom end, and we're going to go all the way up to installing the ignition and water pump and the ancillary parts that go on either side of the of the cases, but stopping short of installing the cylinder. So I hope that you enjoy this video. I hope it's not too long, and uh, if you like it, please subscribe. I really appreciate likes and subscribes. Uh, everybody knows that all these uh, social media channels, including YouTube, operate off of likes and uh, follow so if you subscribe and you like that really helps me a lot so enjoy the video I put a lot of effort into it, it took a lot of time to edit this one so please enjoy it and enjoy doing the work in your garage okay so we're switching sides and this is kind of a silly thing but uh, this is the uh, drain plug and I'm just gonna go ahead and put it in it's the uh, oil drain plug and just rather than take a chance of forgetting it later just put it in now We're gonna start working on all the shifter components. And uh, they're kind of tricky. So there's a little detent piece and some poles and things like that that go in there. And it's a little bit technical because this is the way I do things. I made a note that there's a pin inside, so just don't go throwing away the tape and not salvaging the pin. So this little pin goes right there. like that. So this one I kept together with a little tie strap to keep the order, but this one goes in here, right there. And this little, this little arm right there is the crucial part. So this is the assembly and how it goes together. That goes in and then this piece ends up pulling back. Okay, so the spring rests on this boss right there and that is the actuator that rotates this little drum that I'll show you. This is the drum and this is where the pin that I just showed you aligns. This pin right here that we installed aligns with this groove right there. And one thing that's kind of interesting is this is neutral. See how these little uh, pieces are all shaped basically the same? This is the neutral detent. So that little uh, spinning piece right there that part ends up going into this notch right there when the whole assembly is in neutral. So that's kind of an interesting little sidebar. The first thing we're gonna install is this detent thing that I was talking about. So here's the order that they go. Uh, this is the bolt, the detent arm, washer, and spring. Spring, washer, detent arm, bolt. It's not specified in the service manual to put thread locker on this, but it doesn't hurt anything either. And one thing that I should mention, I see people using thread locker wrong all the time. A bolt with any grease on it or a hole into which that that bolt is inserted um, will not benefit from a thread locker or won't significantly benefit from a thread locker if the threads have oil or any other kind of dirt or contaminants on it. So what I recommend doing on any bolt that you're gonna put thread locker on clean it. I use brake cleaner, spray it with brake cleaner, uh, wipe it down or dig in there really deep with a rag and do it right. So uh, all these holes that I have are clean and ready to accept the thread locker. So we're ready to go. The spring goes like that. This goes on top. This arm needs to connect. This indentation here needs to connect to this. And by connect, I mean just needs to insert into that notch. So that's basically how that goes. Now there's tension on this, so it takes a little bit of work to get that thing to line. That's how that's gonna go. So the next step is I'm gonna put a little Loctite blue on there. This is not called out in the manual for this or the, the service bulletin or anything. I just think it doesn't hurt a thing. It's not gonna hurt anything to have a little bit of thread locker in there. So this has a torque specification, by the way, which we are going to deal with a little bit further down the line. The manual shows to, to hold this back with a screwdriver. 
So that's what I'm gonna do. It looks a little weird to me to do it that way, but that is what Honda says to do. So that's what we do. This little indentation lines up with the pin that we showed you. My hands are covering a little bit, I know, but I showed you the pin just a moment ago and you should be able to figure that out pretty easily. And we should be rocking, there you go. Okay, so now that pin is done so we can release the detent arm. All right, and this one is the bolt that goes into that. And again, we're gonna clean that. That is a clean bolt onto which put a little bit of thread locker. The center pin is 22 Newton meters. So some people I've seen disassemble the gear shift poles before they put all, everything back together. And I didn't disassemble them. I just, you know, left them all together. There's nothing about them that needs rebuilding. They just have spring loaded little pins and things in there. So I just left my whole assembly together. Uh, I didn't really see any particular reason like I said, to, to disassemble it. So I just left it all as, as one piece. Okay, next is this plate with the pole. So this, from what I've read, is a little bit of a tricky process and I've seen it done a few times and it looks tricky. So basically what we have is this plate and these poles and the poles can pop out pretty easily. So let's hope that we can get those in without too much drama. Look at that, you'd think I'd done it a hundred times. All right, engaged they are. Yep, looks good. All right, that went in remarkably drama free. The next step, we're getting close to the end, is these bolts basically go right here. Curiously, they do not have washers, which I thought was a little odd, but that is the way that they are specified in the manual, so no washers. Newton meters. This one's 22. Curiously, the manual says securely on these. Uh, it doesn't give a torque spec. So uh, you, you notice that I had to go back and retorque the uh, bolt that's under all this stuff. And uh, anyway, these are this has torque spec, this has torque spec, this says securely cannot explain sometimes the way the manual works. So finally, we are getting to where we're putting in the uh, this gear shift spindle. And the gear shift spindle, uh, here it is. The manual barks loudly, not to forget this washer. Not that I would, but just so you know, um, it says do not forget the washer. So there is like a little circlip under there and it makes sense you wouldn't want that to be the the surface that's rubbing against the uh, the crankcase half. So this piece uh, plunges through the other side, and um, it has a uh, it has a seal, so we don't want to injure the seal. So we're going to put a nice amount of assembly lube on there. The manual specifies that this pin right here goes in between these two spring pieces. There's a, two arms of a spring basically, and that should align in between. Afterward, this is supposed to slide over that. And it specifically says to make sure you're in a gear other than neutral. And to be honest, I'm not 100% sure that I am. So I'm pretty sure I'm in first. When I put this thing together, I had it in first, but I'm just hoping I didn't uh, do that wrong. Okay, pin is aligned. Pin aligned between the two arms. One thing I'm not going into is the kickstart stuff that goes here because this is a shifter cart motor and it does not have that. So regrettably, you're gonna have to find that information somewhere else if that's something that's important to you. So this collar goes over this bearing and um, I'm putting a pretty healthy dose of grease on that too. And I bet we're gonna be squeezing out a bunch of grease, but it, the manual does say to pack that thing with grease. So I do what it tells me. That is a wrap on this side. We're gonna start installing the clutch on the other side. Okay, just for the purpose of demonstration, I'm gonna pray that I uh, put this thing together correctly. 
I found that you need to spin the shafts for the gears to select. So this is kind of a, one of these deals where we pray a little bit because if this doesn't work right, then I'm gonna have to split these cases and figure out what is the root of my problem. So here we go. So let's go all the way down to first. That is in first. Okay, thank you, Jesus. So the next one is gonna be neutral. Let's see if we can get there. Half click. Half click, and we have neutral. Check it out. So this gear is not spinning. Hope you can see that. Not spinning, that's neutral. Can't believe it. I rebuilt a gearbox, first time ever. Beautiful. Let's just go through the whole thing. This is a six speed, so that is neutral and uh, back. Should be second. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. They all work. That is the first time that I have ever done anything like this, so I'm pretty excited that it's working. The next thing the service manual calls out for to install is this final drive gear is what it's called. I put a little bit of, uh, of assembly lube on there just because I'm one of those people that likes to put assembly lube on things <laughs> because I figure it can't hurt to have a little bit more. Uh, next that goes on is this bolt, and uh, this one does not require thread locker for sure, as it goes on pretty firmly. Next, we'll do the, uh, the torque specification on this and put the clutch basket on. Next step that we have is to tighten down this um, a primary gear, I think that's called. And to do that, you have to connect the clutch basket, which has sprockets on the back. Let me show that to you. So it has sprockets uh, or teeth, whatever. And I already installed this needle bearing and little sleeve. Um, I didn't put that on the camera, but those go down. I'm, I'm going to go through all that when I really install the clutch anyway. It's going to be a little bit difficult to get this torque, to be honest, because we're sitting on the bench. And you know, when you're on the bench, everything wants to twist. It'd be much nicer if I had this thing set on a proper stand, but I just don't have that. So I have set my um, torque wrench to the specified torque for this, which is 64 Newton meters. I think this is going to end up being like a little interference fit, as they say, against my tool. See how that's going to butt against it, but I don't think it's going to hurt anything. The next part of this build is going to be installing the clutch. And to do that, there are some specific parts. You may recall from the, well, it's been a while now, but the first video, this is the plunger rod that goes, that goes through here like that. It looks different in the diagram, interestingly enough, but this uh, diagram actually, uh, I've been finding that not all those are correct. The clutch basket. All right, so here we got the sleeve. This is the needle bearing. Clutch basket is the next part. This is a thrust washer. And like the thrust washers that were in the transmission, this one has a smooth side and a round side. And interestingly, this is not called out in the uh, manual as to which side faces what, but from reading in other places, it seems like the beveled edge is supposed to be facing up in this fashion, so upward. So that's the way we're gonna put it in. Next is gonna be this uh, inner clutch hub, which I'm not gonna bring out just yet because you're gonna see it in the video, the plunger rod that goes in like this. And then I'll go through these various pieces as we go along too. But we've got clutch disc, uh, friction, friction disc, and the metal plates that go in between a washer. This is that washer here. This little special um, plate that has bent, bend up tabs that kind of work in the same way that safety wire works where it just makes it so that this bolt is restrained with a tab so that it can't break loose. So that's the order of those. So you see this and then this and that bolt right there. And then you'll see the other components as we go through. So, uh, but I wanted to give you guys a little bit of an overview of the next steps that we're gonna be involved in as far as the assembly. So we're gonna set the engine up and start putting that together. This thing takes a lot of torque. Um, it's pretty stiff, by the way. So, but that thing's installed. On this side, we're basically ready to go with the install the way that I mentioned. So we're gonna need some assembly lube or grease, whatever. And I really don't think it matters that much which ones that you use, but it just says lubrication. So I'm gonna go ahead and use some of this grease because I have so much of it, but I know I'm never gonna go through it all. So uh, lubing up that shaft. This is the collar that I was talking about. On she goes. 
little bit of lube on this. Needle bearing that goes on top. Needle bearing. Next is the clutch basket itself. And then this engages the gears on this main output drive. All right, so from there, we basically start stacking in all of the, um, the uh, clutch discs. So, and lastly, we have this washer that I was mentioning earlier that has the smooth face, the smooth, the sharp side, and the rounded side. And from what I've been reading, the rounded side faces up. And actually from the, the distance, uh, from the, when I broke the engine down, this was the way it was facing also. The manual also specifies the service manual to inspect the, these things along the edges here for wear and indentations from the clutch pack, which I don't see any. So this thing is in pretty good condition and it has been so far. This piece goes on next. This is the, uh, is the, is the part, the inner clutch hub that holds the um, uh, clutch disc and friction disc in place. So I just like to have grease on everything. And on she goes. So the next thing I got to do is put on the uh, washer and nut that go on here. So this is the washer that goes on. And this one too looks to have a sharp and a smooth side. So I'm not 100% sure on that one. Yeah, it looks rounded. And they both look actually kind of rounded on this one. So then uh, the next piece is this one that is a sacrificial piece. And I bought a new one of these, so I'm gonna add that. This um, fun little piece has a little fork edge, and it goes on to the, um, it's supposed to straddle the, one of these raised edges on the inside of the hub, so as to keep it from spinning. So it doesn't look like it specifies any particular one that it's supposed to, um, to straddle. It looks like any one will do. It has a little dust on it. So we put that on like that. This is a bi-directional nut. And this sucker has a tremendous amount of torque on it. This tightens down to 59 Newton meters. So let me get my wrench set and I'll torque that down. I'm hoping you can see what I'm doing here. I just went ahead and videoed this even though it's a little bit hard to see, but this uh, tool is the main thing that I wanted you to see. This is that basket restraining tool that I used. And it really makes it easier. Okay, that is torqued. Okay, now we're gonna bend up the tabs, the little restraining tabs, to keep that nut from coming loose. I've seen this done different ways, but I think probably the cleanest is with a pair of channel locks. Okay, so I bent up those three tabs, restraining this nut. Okay, so the manual calls for soaking these um, discs or at least covering them with oil. So I'm gonna time lapse that, but each one of these, I'm just putting a little coat of oil on, uh, transmission um, oil, and I'm stacking those in there. So one other thing too that I um, found from doing reading is these plates. These plates also, like those washers and stuff in the transmission and even the ones related to this clutch hub, have a sharp face and a smooth face. The manual does not call out which direction that they should be. As long as all of them are in the same direction, I'm hoping that that's gonna be okay. But I'm gonna do all of them with the, um, with the sharp face up. Okay, those are all the uh, clutch pieces installed. And then finally, there's the uh, cover plate that goes over this. Now this is held in with um, springs and bolts, one, two, three, four, five. And I bought all new springs. So we're gonna replace those springs and install the basket. And lest we forget, this is the plunger rod that goes in there. 
I forgot to mention that. So that goes into this part. <laughs> but there is a little ball inside of there, uh, interestingly, and it calls for grease on that as well. So we're gonna grease that puppy up. And install that. And lastly, the clutch pressure plate goes on. And as you recall, I bought all new springs, which are all here. These are brand new. And these are the uh, bolts that go in it. I didn't change those. These should be tightened in a crisscross pattern. And the reason for that is that this is a, this is a piece of cast aluminum. And if you put too much tension on one side, it can crack. So you wanna do that, kind of spin it around, spread the load around by not putting too much tension on any one bolt. This is the same way that you tighten a cylinder head on a car. All right, so we've got those snugged up. These require torque also. So I'm gonna get the specification for that. Just 10 Newton meters on that. To restrain this, I'm gonna put a washer in there. Okay, so this side of the crankcase is pretty much done now with the clutch install, but I wanted to show you just a couple of things. One is this bearing right here, uh, it belongs to the, um, the power valve system that uh, in carting is not uh, part of our rules. We take the, the power valve system off. So even though this bearing was in there uh, and press fitted, I went ahead and took it out because I don't need a bearing possibly like coming loose from the inside of this bore here. And then the other thing I wanted to go over was this component here. This is the uh, drive system for the, for the water pump. And I did go over this a little bit already, but interestingly, once again, I have a discrepancy in the fiche. So here we show the, this device with it looks like a washer on there, but it's not specified that it's a washer. And in the service manual, it shows a washer. Now, when this thing came out, it did not have a washer. And I am installing it in the same fashion. The height of the gears is the same as it was when it came out. So I didn't lose the washer or anything because this is the exact height of the gears as they were when I disassembled this. So I just wanted to go over that with you guys real quick. Okay, the next thing we're putting together basically is this water pump assembly. And uh, so uh, I showed you just earlier that this thing is already installed in the other side, the right side crank piece. And the next thing that's gonna go is this bearing, then the seal. And this seal is actually the oil seal, so it keeps the oil in the, in the crankcase. This one is the water seal that goes on the um, water pump side. And then you assemble the impeller and so on as you go through. So um, these components have to be installed on this case half. Uh, this is, I have powder, I mean, um, Cerakoted. So it's like super sexy. And uh, so let's get started. So I look at this real carefully to see the orientation of the various seals. This uh, smaller one is the oil seal and this one right here is the um, water seal. And uh, it's, it's pretty spelled out in the manual. And you can also see it on the fiche here basically, but the smooth faces actually are, are touching. They're not actually touching, but they're in the same, uh, they, they face each other, I guess, for lack of a better way of putting it. So you can see that the open side on this one faces this direction, and it's the same with this one. See the closed side is facing this direction. And that is the way that it reads in the um, service manual too. So I was a little bit curious about that because it seemed a little unusual to have those faces like that somehow, but that's what it is. So 
I uh, just wanted to kind of clarify to you guys so you could see how that the orientation of that is. So the first thing I have to do is uh, drive in this bearing and I'm hoping that that will not be super complicated. Yep, that's in there. All right, next we're gonna do the seal installations. The larger diameter seal is the one that, uh, I mean, the smaller diameter seal is the one that goes in first. So the way this works is kind of a sandwich. So there's three layers. The bearing is the, in this case, is the bottom most. Then there's another seal, this one right here, which is the oil seal. This one goes in the middle, and then this other one faces the outside. So it's kind of an unusual uh, thing. There's a lot of sealing going on here. So I'm hoping that this sucker will go in without too much barking. The manual does not specify putting lube on there, but to me it helps because you, uh, you'll you know that um, it, it won't cock that way. It's very strange to me for some reason. It just doesn't seem normal, but that is how it goes. Okay, that seals in. Next one is the water seal. Just a thin layer of grease just to help make sure it goes in nice. All right, so this piece is now assembled and we're ready to put it on to the other case half. So. Uh, Next thing we're gonna do is put the motor back over here and start installing this piece on top. Okay, next thing we're gonna do is put the gasket down. So we're gonna lube up this uh, surface just like we did when we did the case halves. Okay, this thing requires a couple of dowel pins that I'm gonna have to install next. New dowel pins here. So we gotta slime that up with a little bit of anti-seize, doesn't take much. On goes the gasket. So then we gotta lubricate this side of the gasket. A little more anti-seize on the other end of this. Now we're ready to receive the right side crankcase cover. Okay, now we're putting the bolts in. All these bolts are the same with the exception of this one right here, number 17. It's so odd. This one's a 40 millimeter and check it out. The line goes uh, out, down, across, and back up this little dog leg and then into this boss right there. It's really funny. I really struggle to find the line for that one. So that one is a 40 millimeter and it goes into this hole here. I'm gonna do something unorthodox and not listen to the manual. That doesn't seem right, and there's not enough thread there for this bolt to go in deep enough. But this one, however, is short, and I'm gonna switch them. I know that seems weird, but that is what I'm doing. And I'm, as I mentioned before, I find these microfiche often wrong. That is a perfect fit right there. Okay, those are gonna have to be torqued, but I'm not gonna do that just yet because I still have more work to do on this side. I'm gonna torque everything at the same time. So the next thing is this uh, Honda cover plate and then the water pump, and that's basically the end of this side. 
Okay, next is this uh, super hot Honda cover, and I uh, installed a new gasket here. That's just an O-ring style gasket, and uh, I want to make sure that sucker doesn't fall out while I'm trying to install it. So I'm going to put just a dab of grease to kind of stabilize that thing. So no dowel pins on that, but of course, because of the personality that I have, I bought all new fasteners because I want everything to look friggin' awesome. Again, I'm going to have to torque spec these, but I'm not doing it now because I want to torque everything at the same time. Okay, next thing is a water pump, and this side will be complete. My water pump parts are not in very good condition this one i'm gonna have to clean that up real good before we're going to use that you know what folks looking at this closer i'm gonna have to replace this part so i ended up kind of mocking it up last time just so that we could finish the build uh, but what i've got now is the microfiche that goes with this this is the one that i got from rocky mountain and i'm replacing basically all this hardware here this plate right here in the middle of number three, that is the one that was rusted. Two gaskets that straddle either side of this metal piece and that covers the impeller. A new impeller, and that's basically it. So uh, well, let's go in and, and finish that water pump once and for all. There's really no good way to restrain the impeller. So I came up with an idea that I think is gonna work. So we're gonna try it out together. I have not tried this off camera, but this is my ignition stator holder that I used um, earlier in the build. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put this engine in gear and use these nubs, I don't know really, I wish I knew the right word for those things, but these little components that are sticking out. And I'm going to stick them into the drive sprocket, which I can probably show you that. I'm going to restrain the motor basically by using this thing inside of the uh, inside the drive sprocket to hold this still. So with the motor in gear, I'm pretty sure that this will be fine. It only takes like 10 foot pounds or something for that um, impeller to be held in place. So it doesn't need a whole lot of force. Okay, so we're gonna remove this old impeller and replace it. So there's that washer that goes on the back. So looking at the microfiche, right here is the washer. Then the impeller, this is the washer that I just took out. And by the way, that restraining thing works like a champ. So this sucker goes on with only like 10 or 12 pounds of force. So it's nothing really that's too aggressive. So next thing that goes in is uh, some dowel pins, that uh, one and two right here. Um, it looks like the gaskets go like this. It's kind of strange that um, that they pick this kind of orientation where the metal surface on one has a rubber face and on the other one it has this, you know, standard gasket face. So it's a little unusual in my opinion that it's like that. So new hardware. And this is the way I do it, so I don't know how you want to do it, but this is number nine. And the reason I did it that way is because that is bolt number nine on the microfiche. And that's just, you know, my way of doing things. You can do it however you want. So the first thing to go on is the gasket. Then our impeller cover. Those little uh, dowel pins make life a lot simpler. All right, so now we're basically ready to install the water pump cover.
Okay, on go-karts, we have this pipe cradle. And this is the, uh, the front pipe cradle. And the hardware that's in here is specific to this, so I have to use the hardware that came with it. Finally, I already installed the drain plug bolt, which is right here. That's the water drain. So the hose I also installed earlier. And as you saw when I took this cover plate off, the hose uh, came with it. So basically right now, that is a complete water pump. So we're now working on the ignition side. I have to install this thing called a lifter lever. There's this spring here that I have to uh, get in the right spot. So this spring arm right here is supposed to be on the top of that to the right height. And there it is. Okay, and so this piece basically when you pull up, this sends that plunger rod that's in the uh, clutch basket to uh, engage the clutch. That is installed. This um, crank has a Woodruff key. I don't know if you can see that very well, but this keyway right here, um, it's pretty well wedged in to the other crank. So I replaced the crank on this one and it was pretty hard to get that little keyway or that little Woodruff key out to stick in the keyway. So hopefully I'm not gonna have any trouble with that, but just to let you know, don't forget to put that part in. I have an unnatural and embarrassing fear of electronics. So I'm just gonna tell you that up front, <laughs> but uh, I think this was pretty straightforward. So I was reading a lot about how these things work basically and a couple things to keep in mind. So these wires right here can get damaged and you should look and inspect those before you install. Another thing too is uh, this car, this is a go-kart motor and we have a regulatory agency that regulates the karting and it's SCUSA. And so you may see this plate on here. This is basically a limiter so that you can't fiddle with the ignition too much. Another thing too that I wasn't super sure about until I was doing some more reading is the, um, is the timing. So if you don't fiddle with changing the stator or any other electronic components, you allegedly are not really uh, in any position where you need to worry about resetting any timing or anything like that. So I'm really happy to uh, to read that because I don't wanna jack with the timing at all. You do need a timing light in order to uh, to make those kinds of adjustments anyway. So fortunately, that's just you know one of those things if you've never done this, like I never have, you just don't know those things until you read up on them. I can see where these bolts used to be and I'm gonna install them exactly how they came out. This little rubber grommet goes like that. The way that I see this, you could actually jack the timing up a little bit by rotating this plate just a little. So there is more room to change that than they make it seem. So interestingly, these bolts are not specified with a torque value. They say to securely tighten them. So the next thing that goes on is the flywheel. You really feel the power of this magnet or this flywheel as you start to place it over that Woodruff key. Okay, that's how it goes. So curious thing about this also, there's always new and exciting and interesting things. This goes on there. Um, when you do the puller, this thread is a reverse thread, so that was a source of a lot of consternation for me, but that's a reverse thread. By the way, when I cleaned this uh, flywheel off, the smart guys over at Sweet Tech told me to be very careful. There is a little tab here that goes in front of the stator. It's about uh, three quarters of an inch long. And they said, be careful to not round off the edges of that. So uh, just keep that in mind if, you're, if your um, flywheel is rusty also and you're cleaning it. Next is to uh, do the final install of this flywheel. You have to use this very fun little uh, flywheel holder tool that I used in the breakdown video. This uh, torque value, boringly enough, but I've, I've already got the wrench out, is 54 Newton meters on a CR125. This particular setup that I have uses this Swede Tech cover plate that we're gonna put on. This is a uh, protector basically for this and for the stator. This is a, a Swede Tech specific component and um, 
is not going to be something every motorcycle person is going to have. Okay. This side is virtually done. I'm going to put a little case saver on here that um, I'll show you. I'll, I'll just go ahead and add it. But this is something, again, that is a um, specific component to Swede Tech. Before I had the case saver, it kind of wore down this nub that's sticking out, which is where this little plunger rod is housed. So, you know, it's just a nice little feature to keep the chain from beating up on the inside of the cases. This is how it installs. And basically, this is kind of a fancy little deal. It, it keeps the... Um, chain from whacking the cases. We're going to go to the cylinder, believe it or not. I'm just shocked that I'm here in this home stretch in this deal, but I am. Okay, I believe this side is done. So thanks for watching this uh, rather long video on the uh, bottom end. At least we're done, and hopefully I went through it enough that you won't make any mistakes. That was really what I was after. I see a lot of these videos on YouTube, and to me, they, they skip over things. I tried really hard to not skip a single step so that you guys will get a good feel for every single thing that you need to do to rebuild your Honda CR125. So next video we're going to do is going to be on the, uh, the top end. So I'm going to show you how to install the cylinder and the piston and so on. So we basically buttoned up the bottom end here. I hope you really enjoyed the video. If you do, please like and subscribe. I need uh, subscribers. And and likes so the more of those that I get the more that YouTube loves me and that's what I'm after so I enjoy making these videos and it makes it a lot easier to make them when people are liking them and, and subscribing to your channel so hope you enjoyed it enjoy your time in your garage but this is the right part it came out of the uh, of the uh, assembly when I took it apart Whoops. this uh, is my new Honda specific one and of course I had to drop it So that worked out poorly, as you can see.